Simple Humans. My name is Ariane Andrew. I'm Matt Dillon, and welcome to another Piping Hot episode of Sipping the Tea, where we want Ariane. Where we sip the tea and our guests. Are we going to sing it? Because we've got a singer, because I'm not... Are we singing it? All right, guys, one, two, three. Spill that. Spill that. Tea. I don't know what key we're in. What key are we in? Uh, I've got a piano. I oh, live no. for that, honey. I live for that. <laughs> All right, who you got with you, girl? You got Miss Liddy. Liddy, who you got over there? I have Miss Mama here. And that was the new track that you just heard, ladies and gentlemen, back made by this beauty down here, Haywood. Now, she has many variations, many accolades. As a young gay boy, I might have been, you know, bopping to a true way back in, you know, <laughs> Sydney is way, 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 way back. But we're here to talk about, you know, writing, producing, and kind of stepping into the front lines again. So, Haywood, welcome, my love. Hey, babe, thanks for having me, guys. Thank yeah. you for coming by. Yeah. We are super excited to have you. But, girl, we're going to dive right on in. And let's talk about 2020 because 2020... I don't care where you were at in the world, it impacted everybody. I like to say it was an interesting year. Um, yeah. When you look back, um, what is one takeaway that you can say that was positive with your career and as well as personally? I think um, career-wise, um, it kind of worked out pretty good actually because um, even even in the midst of like all the just terrific stuff that was going on, obviously it was a scary time for everyone. Like no one actually wanted to get it. You know what I mean? Like it, it was scary. It was it was legit scary. And um, you know, I, I was okay with the isolation. You know, like it was it was okay. I I had like a small pod at, that we hung out with. Um, but I think for me, like we basically stepped away from from writing and producing for other artists and doing Zoom sessions. I couldn't get on board with the whole Zoom thing. It was just too too much of a disconnect for me personally, but I know a lot, a lot of other people did great with it. But um, for me, I actually had a chance to really like dig into my own record and I just went ham with it. So it was kind of great timing because I signed with the label in December and I, I pretty much had like nine, 10 tracks already wow. fleshed out and a lot of them production was already finished. So. We, we just, you know, now we can just go song by song and just keep popping them out, you know? I like that. I like that. What about personally in terms of like, is it because you're a creative and you live in your mind of creating your worlds and your music that you were comfortable with that, you know, oh my God, the world shut down. This is the new normal. Were you kind of in that zone of like, I'm going to get in my head and create this magic? Yeah, I think like I, I'm, I'm definitely like a make the best out of the situation type person and, you know, it was a shitty situation, but we were all in the same boat. You know, it's not like we all connected on that level. We're all going, this is shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I think Absol that, that absolutely. it was like some kind of camaraderie around that, you know, like even though it was, it was like a really – horribly isolating situation I feel like we all connected around that a little bit and sort of reinvented the way we do things you know and even like on a corporate level like I feel like how many how many companies are going to want to go back to the to like this crazy rent bill you know when they can friggin' do it from home so I feel like the world has forever changed since the pandemic and you know, who none of us saw it coming, but I feel like we've all done pretty well in in light of it, you know. By the way. Hey, babe. Hey. <laughs> okay. I thought, I, I thought I'd get on the tea with you, not the Terps. Yes, girl. Uh, we're about to have you spill the tea. So um, let's do a little, you know, backtrack and get to know a little bit about you, your story, a girl being from Ozzy. Don't like we don't want a whole life storybook now, girl. But give our viewers who maybe aren't familiar with your backstory some tea about you. Girls, spill the tea. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, started as an artist in Australia, had a few uh really good hits there. Um, and then basically, sort of that was coming to a standstill. And I asked to get out of my deal, um, because we wanted to come to the states and just kind of broaden our horizons, and so. Um, yeah, it basically, we came here, I was, um, continuing my artist thing as, as I 
you know, at, you know, that's kind of the path that I was on. Um, and there were lots of mergers and acquisitions happening at the time. And like a lot of people were like, yep, yeah, we're in, we're in, we're in. And then they all got laid off or whatever. Like, you know, just it wasn't the right time, clearly. You know, like I always, um, I think, you know, there was an element of disappointment at the time, obviously, but I have learned to live from a very philosophical standpoint and see the closed doors as there's something there's something more fitting, there's something better for me that's coming and that there's a reason for this rather than, uh, you know, you can be disappointed for a second, but, but I think that I bounce back pretty quick and just kind of go, okay, what's next then, you know? Um, so I uh, actually ended up just writing and producing for other people. We got a couple of like opportunities and uh, one of them was to produce Ali and AJ um, on Hollywood Records at the time. Actually, they weren't on Hollywood Records. We um, we basically produced eight out of the ten songs on the record and co-wrote their first single, which got them signed to Hollywood Records, and that was our first top 40 hit in the States. And then we got, like, kick-ass management, and from there we basically, our journey of writing producing for other people started and was... Um, was pretty amazing you know like we got to work with some of the best of the best and then you know Haywood emerges you know what I mean it's like I just yeah. had this moment yeah I love that I love that sorry the, there's so many names on the on the docket that you've worked with but there was one and I already knows this Alan Walker honey that track that came out with that's my, that's my man honey Obsessed. Oh, I love that. Obsessed. He loves it. That, that's, like, that's that's my guy. And like every track, and I was like, holy shit. She did it's out of control. <laughs> so I think it's so dope that you've kind of hit this moment where Backbeat is out now. You've mm -hmm. had two singles as Haywood. What was that transition from the, the mega success as writer, as producer? What was it? Was it the pandemic or was it just felt the synergy was right for you yeah. to come back and be like, I'm ready now to do this again? Because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of noise. It's a lot of. Yeah. 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 So what was it for you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that I I had I feel like once an artist, always an artist, you know, whether you're writing other people's stories or writing your own story and um I, I always kind of had this feeling that it was just like a matter of time before it happened again, you know. Um, but I, I also was, you know, like first time round on Sony was absolutely awesome. But I, I really, um, you know, I, I think that I wasn't truly writing from life experience at that time. I was mm -hmm. writing like great pop songs. Um, I knew how to craft a song, but I wasn't. Uh, writing my autobiography per se and um, and even my musical auto autobiography I'm classically trained I've had music in my head for a long time that I that I felt like I wanted to explore kind of undiluted which is me alone in a studio and I had never really gotten to do that and I felt like um, I had this moment where I just sort of like the universal you know collided and I I had this aha moment of it's time, you know? Yeah. And so I kind of put pen to paper and the lyrics weren't flowing. I It just like the, the tracks were coming out great and the lyrics were just like contrived. They weren't, I just felt like, I felt like I was trying to be too cryptic, too cool. Um, I was trying to keep up with trends. I was chasing other, I was, I was watching other artists, seeing what they were doing, trying to emulate it. And I hadn't really, I, I didn't really have the balls to kind of do my own unique thing at that time. And so I, because it felt inauthentic, I wasn't just in it to be this slight pop star. You know what I mean? That's never been the game for me. Um, mm -hmm. It's always the the authenticity of the music and and loving what I'm doing. That's truly at the core of it. And so basically I put the pen down and just went back to writing and producing for other artists. And then a few years later, I started getting songs, like fully formed choruses in my head, all in a split second, like lyrics, melody, track idea, all in one second. So I, I didn't actually ever really make a calendar date to, you know, go into the studio and start hammering out. You know what I mean? It, it, they literally just dropped dropped down into me so 
um, I basically started fleshing out those tunes and pretty much every song on the record to date has kind of come in that form. It hasn't wow. really been like a laborious thing. And, and that's why, and I also kind of tapped into this new way of songwriting, um, kind of very conversational, but also, um, the rhymes are hitting in the right place. There's, there's interesting rhythms. Like, I don't know. It's honestly, it's been the most incredible thing that I've like one of the most incredible things that I feel like I've experienced in my life because it's just flowed you know what I mean I love that you just spoke about that because I think it's so important um whether you're a musician what whatever it is that you're doing um entertainment life that you stay true to your authentic self and I mean that's so commendable that you know you had a moment, went back, but then was like, okay, now this is a time. Like, this is a time to be true to myself because it's so hard in the business to, because, you know, you have to conform or you have to follow this trend or do this. And I feel like it shows in people's work when you're living your best self and what's really like resonates with you compared to- Absolutely. Absolutely. And, yeah. And the thing is like, I spend my life writing to briefs and- I just hate it. I hate it. I hate, I feel like you're so confined and, uh, you know, in your creativity. And I didn't have to be like that with my project. I made a conscious decision to not listen to anything, um, to basically just have my own jam session in the studio. And you know, when you feel it, you know, when you feel it, I've been doing it long enough to know when I'm, when I'm like, oh my gosh, there's, wow, this is special. Okay. I'm feeling this. You know what I mean? And so I would just um, keep working it until that magic was just, you know, was hitting me. Well, so, right. but I didn't right. work around all that, all that noise, you know? Yeah. You, you block the noise out because I'm telling you, Back Bay is just getting started. That is like, the, the song itself is, it feels fresh. It feels like something I've never, ever heard. I'm not in the music biz, so I'm not really sure what it is about it, but it feels like that. I would say UK pop and, and that is like, it feels fresh and the visual to, to what you're putting out there. How important is that, I guess, you know, being the authentic self and just driving that to creating that image that, you know, it's, it's very tailored, it's very, it's beautiful, but it's like punk rocker. It's a bit of every, maybe it's a bit yeah. of all of what's inside your head. <laughs> oh, big time. I mean, I definitely, uh, I think I've had a very, clear picture of like it is intrinsically my style to be honest like I just um I feel great in a suit you know what I mean like I just you're looking good girl I'm you know ready. what I'm saying and I yes. feel like the, you know I'm inspired by the Annie Lennoxes by the um you know the power Yay. women of the 80s and 90s who they did have a kind of a masculine style and I definitely feel like I resonate with that a lot like when I um, you know, when I picture my performance and all that kind of stuff, I, I the performers that I look up to are all guys. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's Matt Healy, it's Chris Martin, it's, you know, Rolling Stones, it's whatever. It's like I, yeah. I definitely resonate more with that. I, you won't catch me dead in a pair of heels. You know what I mean? Like it's just not me. So I feel like, you know, if I'm going to be authentically, intrinsically me, I want to be comfortable. I want to be, oh, I, love that. I want to be in my outfits. I, you know, half of the shoots I've done, I haven't had a stylist. I've just gone to Wasteland and picked yes. a bunch of cool stuff out, but I, I definitely know what I like and, and, and it's all so authentic. And that's why I think I can do this because I, I really couldn't do this if I had to put on this persona or, or you know, like, it's just not me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the great thing is, I mean, as crazy as our world has been, it's also given an opportunity to be like, you know what, if you want to be fucking superwoman or superman, you can do it. You know what I mean? And people are creating so many different things that, you know, aligns with them instead of just having to, you know, follow the society's rules. But with that being said, and you like creating your own lane and saying, fuck that, this is who the hell I am, you know, what legacy are you trying to leave here on this earth? Because you've already done so many great things, but I see it in you. Like, what is, what, what are you trying to leave? Like, what is your mark before you leave this earth? I mean, I think my mark is, uh, you know, I think everything that's happened this time around has been very serendipitous. And, you know, I, I think that, 
um, it's never over. That's the bottom line. It's never over until the day you die. So who are you going to let tell you what you can do? You know what I mean? And I think we live in an industry that is so um, narrow minded, I would say, you know, and, uh, you know, people say you've got an expiration date, you know, uh, who, sorry, who's telling me that? You know what I mean? No one's going to tell me Yes, that. girls. Woo, love you it. Know? And, and I, the, you know, a classic example is the Tina Turner documentary. You know oh. what I mean? That woman oh. is so incredible. She had her heyday um, and she was older, you know, and she broke, you know, at that point. And no one was going to tell her no. And all the people that did were put to shame. And I kind of, I'm so inspired by that. And I just feel like a lot of, a big part of my message is like, believe in yourself and don't let anybody tell you no. You know what I mean? Like, and I think another part of my message is like, don't rely on other people, you know, the end of the day, people are all caught up in their own worlds and, and no right. one is going to get on a train that isn't moving. So if you're waiting for something to happen, you get the train moving and people will get on. You know what I mean? And and I think if that means that you need to go and learn a music program, that you need to go to, to learn, you know, go to guitar lessons or piano lessons and learn how to be self-sufficient because, you know, if I was relying on other producers to make my tracks, I'd be screwed, you know. But I'm like, I can do this. You know, no one's giving me an expiration date because I'm self-sustained. And this is mm. this is a level playing field in this day and age. Anyone can sure do is. anything. You know what I mean? It's You're not restricted to being signed to a label, even though I'm blessed that I am. Um, you're not restricted to that. It's fair game, you know? It's anybody's game. So if you can, like, get the tools in your hand, then no one can stop you at the end of the day. I just got chilled. Sit up and sit. Yeah, me too. That's some... That's some real shit. That's actually, maybe that comes from that feeling of like, and I read a quote that you gave to American Songwriter about persistence, hard work, but now, and it seems how I approach life, and I know you do, Ari, too, it's also finding that balance mentally because what will be, will be, and, and that journey, you've had many incarnations already in your career that, you know, you you kind of, each one of us here, it's kind of like, I feel like there's a, a layer of like, the spiritual sense of like self-worth and being like, well, fuck it, I'm gonna do it this way. Yep. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. And it just so happens by doing it your way. And maybe it's the universe as well, that it's it's working. People are really fucking resonating to your shit right now. And that's, that's it's because wild. you're- it's wild. And I think that, you know, the other but you thing you created that. Sorry to interrupt you, but you created that. I had to I had to give you that prop that they're responding, I think, Ari, because fuck, I'm blown away by somebody in that mental state. Yeah, it's I always say, like, don't like you've said it, don't wait for someone to come knocking. Build your door no. and knock the motherfucker down and have people waiting in the line down the street to be like, can can um can I come? And then that? charge them five ninety nine to fucking get in the door, man. All of them. <laughs> Hell yes. Hell freaking All of them. yes. Hell yes. Yeah. And yeah. I also think that um, I think there's also another really interesting law of the universe, which is um, it's like when you get too hard into the struggle, and you and you're just trying to to force doors down a little bit too hard before they're ready. Um, you can actually have the opposite effect. It can repel your your yeah. future, you know, and it's almost like you if you sit back into your gift, you know, and, and into your passion and you just keep your head down, then that stuff comes, you know what I mean? And and sometimes I have to learn the hard way. Sometimes you get restless and you're like frustrated and disappointed. You're not seeing the results you want and you I start. I mean, not to cut you off, that's all of us, especially people who have a different mindset with the mindset to really succeed. So, yeah. I, I mean, it happens to the best of us. It does. It really does. And sometimes we just got to relax and take a walk around the neighborhood and, and experience nature and clear our heads and go, you know what, this, I think also quite often I'll just like put everything in perspective. You know, my little story compared to the big picture, 
does it really matter that much? Like, I think we can ground ourselves. I love that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. get your head out of the clouds, ground yourself and go, you know what? I'm doing what I can do. There's a way bigger picture here and I'm just a freaking fragment of that picture and I need to have the big picture in mind. You know what I mean? And sometimes that's seeing other people and appreciating other people and getting your head out of your own ass. You know, that's a that's another great gift that we all have that we don't use enough, you know? Getting our own asses? Yes, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> But I will say this, I will say we'll this. To hear it, you also have to learn the art of, and I love that you are truly what, who I thought you would be because you remind me, so does she not remind you of Jess and Lisa from the Brennan Kids? Success is given based on, I think, kindness and being a good human being, honestly. Like yeah. if you're a nasty person, eventually it will, the cards will come tumbling down or You'll, you'll be an Or you're just unhappy. I mean, Whether in l this life or the next, you're right. going to get it at some point. There you go. You know what Maybe I'm saying? Maybe not this life. Correct. Yeah. But you should also look at, and I hope you do, and I hope you, you know, the compliment is like they're, they're, you're creating this community, I feel, around the music that's happening now. And it's exciting to watch because it feels like something special. It feels like this is, the next level of chapter for you and it's probably everything that you wanted but you had this beautiful clarity that it's yeah. it's great i mean you're touching millions of streams like on your music your music you've done it's it's beautiful to watch and it's even more beautiful to hear you speak about life this has been like a really interesting chat yeah. about life no it's but what i cool. love too is that i'm so intuitive and even though it's different, like you talk about the Zoom thing, it's not it's not the same as having like that personal interaction and really getting that vibe. But there yeah. is some pe there are people who we do have these chats with where there is like this connection. And I can just see it through you and your aura is that you're truly living in your as your true self. You're not putting on a show. You're not giving us the cookie cutter answer or what, you know, you know, when you know what the audience would they feel like they want to hear you know what I mean you're yeah. being so true to yourself and I fucking love it girl don't ever change God, it ain't no can you flip that. that fucking wig man come on girl flip, flip the hairs <laughs> the hairs I love that I do I'm gonna go off script very quickly because we had a fan question that fits into what this is and yeah. it's actually not a fan question I just realized Joe Daddick oh I love you my friend Love he Joe. asked, he asked this, and I think this is perfectly timed. What would you tell 20 year old Leah Howard? Hey, Wood, Howard, take that back, motherfucker. Howard's good. I, I like, like Howard. Howard. Howard's way more pro. I don't even know. I was thinking about John Howard for a second. I was like, <laughs> wait, that's, that's our old prime minister. I was like, what happened? <laughs> that's right. Good old Howard. Uh, yeah. Um, by the way, sorry, I, I've actually got trackies on the bottom. Business on the Girl, I have some booty shorts. Right. Yes. yes. Come on, stand up, girl. Come on. Get it. Get it. Get it. Yeah. Come on. Woo. I love that. Love to see it. Um, I would say, um, I would say to 20-year-old Leah, trust your instincts more. Mm. Don't let don't let the industry execs bully you into a decision. Um yeah, it's it's trust your instincts and go with it, no matter what, you know. Um, I feel like it's really easy to feel as as an artist, you know, I don't feel like this at all. My label is letting me run amok, seriously. They're letting me do whatever I want. I just love them for that. Um, I mean, I show them the video when it's done, you know what I mean? Like, they're just amazing. <laughs> they're just amazing. Um, but I think that, you know, trust your instincts it's very easy to feel like you're indebted when when you're an artist and a label spending all this money that's the way i felt i felt like i was in debt to them to do what they wanted me to do because of all the money they'd spent on me and you know what they were spending money on me because they believed that i was good a good investment yeah you know? and so i think that um that's what i would say to 20 year old me stick your gut stick to your guns and stay true to yourself yeah which i believe i did for the most part but there are a couple of things you know things 
decisions that I made that I would have um, I would have changed if I could go back. You know, Active is is a is a beautiful thing. But I think you're in the stage of taking back what's yours. So maybe that song you released way back then, girl, <laughs> come on now. Maybe that was a message for you right now. That was now. one of my worst decisions, that song. Oh, honey, that's the jam, honey. That's a banger, a banger. A banger. Yes. Oh, my God, that's my one regret, putting out that song. <laughs> no regrets. No regrets at all. That no still comes that's up in my be where you're at. Oh, I just love you for that. Oh, my goodness. No, I feel like a little messed up should have been the one after We Think It's Love. I don't know if you've heard that one, but. I, I, I listen. It's funny, though, that that's how I, I was. I don't know what I just, every now and then I go back into, like, music I used to listen to, and I was like, I wonder what that person's up to. I wonder what that person's up to. And then I rediscovered this whole new wow, person you're that kidding. you've become. That's crazy. And now I had seen you blow the fuck up, and I'm like, hey, girl, wow. get, you're doing shit. So it's kind of cool. I love it. Wow. Yeah. So, girl, for people who are living under a rock, can you <laughs> let everybody know where they can follow you at, where they can stream the music, follow your journey, the whole nine girls, spill the motherfucking tea. Tea. Uh, I, socials, you mean? I guess uh, yeah. Instagram is Leah Haywood, L E A H Haywood, H -A, like hay and wood, like what grasses, what horses eat. Um, and then. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Twitter, oh gosh, they're all different. Oh no, can I get back to you? <laughs> we'll put them in the link in the bio. Yes. Follow Leah Hayward on Instagram. <gasps> Leah Hayward, no, Hayward on Spotify. Hayward on, Hayward on all DSPs, Apple, Spotify, all that okay. kind of stuff. Yep. That's um, the most that's, important one. Yep, yep. So you can find me on Spotify under Hayward. Yes. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> Where can everybody follow you at, Matt? You can follow me at Matt Dillon 1983. And if they don't already know it, Ariane, where can they follow you? Across the month. I'm just kidding. Across the board at Ariane Andrew. And of course, follow Sipping the Tea at Sipping the Tea TV show on Instagram, Sipping the Tea TV one on Twitter. And um, of course, if you love this episode, please share with your friends, family members, your pet, whoever. Subscribe. <laughs> comment and for all of our auditory listeners uh, you can stream this on all digital platforms but we will catch you guys same time same place of another episode of sip in the tea tv show sip in the tea <laughs>